students, you are welcome back to this class once again. My name is David from MSI Edutech. This is lesson two for MTH 401. I believe you enjoyed the previous class. Today, I'll be teaching you another topic, which is indices. I told you uh, during our last class that you need to understand standard form before you can understand laws of indices. So I'm going to take you through about several laws of indices. I mind you, these laws, if you really understand these laws, you are, you can solve any questions on uh, indices. And I want to advise you, get your pen and make sure that where you are now is void of distraction and noise. And make sure that you follow me as we solve questions on laws of indices. So let's start with laws of indices. We have seven laws of indices. We have more than seven, pardon me for that. But for this class, I'm going to give you seven laws of indices related to your level. Now, the first law is uh, a raised power x multiplied by a raised power y. Now, this is base, this is base. If you look at this, we have a here, a here, here. This will give us a x plus y. That is the first law. Now, for you not to cram this, I want to give you an example related to this law. And the example is, if you have something like 10 raised power 5 multiplied by 10 raised power 2, simplify this. 10 is here, 10 is here. This will give us 10 raised power 5 plus 2, which will give us 10 raised power 7. So this is just the application of this law. I believe you understand that, right? Now let's go to the second law. The second law states that if you have a raised power x divided by a raised power y, this will give us, this is division. Multiplication will change the power to plus. Y division will change the power to minus. And what is that? This will give us a raised power x minus y. Do you understand that? Now I'm going to give you two uh, examples related to this. Uh, and these two examples is like if you have the same base and if you have different base. Now, let's take for instance, if you have um, something like a 4 raised power y to raised power 2 divided by 2 raised power y raised power, um, sorry, let's, let's call this 8 and let's call this 2. Now, the question is simplify. Now, to simplify this, applying the law, you are going to have 4 y raised power 8 divided by 2 y raised power 2. 2 here 1, 2 here 2. So this will give you 2 y raised power 8 minus 2. Uh, you want to ask question, how do we get 8 minus 2? What we just apply is this second law of indices. When you have division, the power will turn to minus. So this will give us 2 y raised to power 6. I believe you understand that, right? Just make sure that you pay attention to this class and you will understand everything we are doing. In case you have any question, you can always get back to me uh, via WhatsApp number written on the screen and I'm going to answer your question. Now, let's go to the third law. The third law states that let me manage this. The third law states that if you have something like um, a raised power minus x, a raised power minus x, this will give you 1 all over a raised power x. Just like uh, you have, um, let's say for instance, you have a raised power minus uh, 2. You know, it's going to give you a, 1 all over a raised power 2. You have like uh, a raised power minus 3. You know, it's going to give you 1 all over a raised power 3. Do you understand? Huh? This is just the application of this third law. Now, let me take you to fourth law. The fourth law is just like uh, you have something like um, a raised power 0. A raised power 0 will give you 1. He said, how? 
let this thing uh, sink into your brain. Anything that has power of zero will give you one. Four raised to the power zero is one. N raised to the power zero is one. Two raised to the power zero is one. Seven raised to the power zero is one. One million raised to the power zero is one. So you need to understand that. Now, let me give you an example on this. Let's say, for instance, we want to match this together. You have something like simplify, simplify. Daniel, don't cry this afternoon. Simplify for um, y raised to power 4 divided by 2 y raised to power 2 multiplied by n raised to power 0. Now, to solve this question, you can see that I've matched this law and this law, then this law together. Now, match everything together, we are going to have solution. We are going to have 4 y raised to power 4 divided by 2 y raised to power 2 multiplied by n raised to power 0. Now, looking at this, you are going to have um, 2 here 1, 2 here 2. This will give us 2 y raised to power 4 minus 2. That is the power of this y here is 2 multiplied by 1 because n raised to power 0 is what? Is 1. So this will give us 2 y, 4 minus 2 will give us 2 multiply by 1. This multiply will give us 2 y raised to the power 2. I believe you understand that, right? So this is fourth law. Now let's go to fifth law. I'll be right back. Okay class, now we want to look at the fifth one. And the fifth one is like this. Let's say for instance you have A. That is the fifth one. You have A, B, raised to power m this will give you a raised to power m b raised to power m that is telling you that whatever you have outside here as the power it will affect individual which is a and b i believe you understand that right it's just like uh, you have uh, something like a b squared you know that this will give you a squared b squared that is just the interpretation. I'm going to solve more questions on this so that you will see the application of this. Now let's go to the sixth one. The sixth one is if you have something like a raised to power one all over n. Now you need to be very careful here because you have fraction as the power. Now having fraction as the power, this will give you n raised to power what a. I believe you understand that. It's just like a, you have half. You have half of, um, let's say, half of uh, 6. You understand? Or you have uh, 6 raised to power half. Now, 6 raised to power half will give you square root of what? Of 6. 1 will be out because this is what half. Now, Okay, class. Now let, let's take a look at the seventh one, which is the last one. The seventh one is a x raised to the power y. Now from here we are going to have y square root of a raised to the power x. So these are the laws of indices, and if you really understand this, I'm telling you you can solve any question on indices. So I want to give you more difficult question in which you, uh, we are going to solve together in this class. I'll be right back. Class, let's take a look at this question. Simplify 2a raised power minus 4, multiply by 1 over 4, multiply, I mean raised power 4. To solve this question, you need to understand that we have 2 here and we have 1 raised power 4 here. So what you do is bring these two out and one all over four. So if you do that, two a minus four multiplied by one all over four, a raised to the power four will give us 
2 times 1 all over 4. Then we have a raised to the power minus 4 here. Multiply by a raised to the power minus 4. Multiply by a raised to the power 4. Now from here, we are going to have 2 times 1, 2, 2 all over 4. Multiply by a raised to the power minus 4. Multiply by a raised to the power 4. Remember, according to the first law of indices, remember that this is A and this is A, the same base. So we are going to pick one out of the two. That will give us one, two here, one, two here, two. This will give us one all over two multiplied by A raised power minus four plus four. And minus four plus four will give us zero. That will give us one all over two multiplied by A raised power zero. Remember our third law, our third law is A raised power zero equals to what? One. So that will give us one all over two, pardon me, one all over two multiplied by one, which will give us one all over two. I believe you understand. And if I'm too fast in this class, uh, you need to give me feedback. And that is why uh, on the comment, you can see uh, something that just write your comment and we will be able to adjust. Uh, I'll be able to adjust myself in this class. Now let's go to the next.